What is up everybody, it is Starboy, and today I have a pretty amazing video for y'all. So, recently if you like me, you've probably noticed that there's been a ton of videos that have been popping up that have all been showcasing Cyberpunk in its absolute photorealistic glory, but the only downside to those videos are they are all being done on RTX 4090s or equally high-end hardware, meaning that if you're like myself, running at RTX 2060, then our dreams of running ray tracing on psycho tuning with path tracing is nothing more than a far dream or a fast way to turn your RTX 2060 into a toaster. So after a little while of experimenting with different settings and graphic mods, I finally come up with a pretty decent setup, at least for the 2060, that allows you to run the game at above 60 FPS. As you can see right now, we're sticking right around the 80 to 70 FPS range, all while improving the graphic quality of Cyberpunk. Now, before we get too deep into the video, first things first, let's go ahead and dive into the settings section so that way we can get it out of the way and start with a solid base before we apply mods. So starting with a few things first off, I will be running DLSS on balanced mode. Now, I haven't noticed a huge difference between balanced and performance, but if you have a more discerning eye than I do, feel free to go ahead and toss that on. For my DLSS sharpness, I do like to keep it around 0.55 to 60 range, but this is personal preference, so adjust that to your taste. Scrolling down a little bit, we'll see that I do have the DLSS frame generation option available, and that's thanks to the DLSS to FSR mod, which is available on Nexus. Now I will come back to this a little bit later, but I will have this also linked down in the description below. For your texture quality settings, however, obviously go ahead and make sure that those are on high if your system can handle it. For ray tracing, if you're on a 2060, I would recommend leaving this off as it will absolutely plummet your FPS. As far as our crowd density settings go, this is one of the most CPU intensive settings that you can adjust. Now, typically if I'm recording, I'll keep this down to low just to reduce the CPU draw. However, for just normal gameplay, you can kick this up to medium without too much pain but pushing this all the way up to high will require a pretty beefy CPU, so just keep that in mind. As far as majority of your basic settings go, things like field of view is completely personal preference, adjust that to your liking. Film grain, chromatic, depth of field, lens flare, as well as motion blur are also pretty much personal preference. However, do take note that some of these, notably depth of field and lens flare, as well as motion blur, do come with a little bit of a performance hitch. Now, personally, a majority of these settings I do keep off with exception to motion blur as I do like it on every now and then. Getting down into the actual beef of the settings, majority of these settings you can absolutely max out on a 2060. Things like contact shadows, lighting geometry, all of these can be pushed up, but there are a few settings in here that are your big performance hitter. Namely, some of those things are like your cascaded shadow range, which you could drop those to medium as it's basically just how far out you can actually see shadows. Pretty much at medium, you really won't notice a difference. Other things like distant shadow resolution, which impacts the resolution of faraway shadows. Volumetric fog can definitely be dropped to low as it's a huge performance hitter. But for the most part, the rest of these settings you can run at between high and medium without too much loss. Now, ambient occlusion, Definitely tweak with that setting between medium and low, depending on your system. I have noticed that medium looks the best while also not hitting performance too bad. As far as the rest of the settings go, I am currently running this Windows borderless, but that's solely so that I could tab in and out while recording. Normally you could just run this in full screen. As far as resolution goes, for the sake of the video, I am going to be running this at 1920 by 1080p, but with NVIDIA super scaling, you can push this a little bit further, but I haven't tested it just yet to see the performance draw. And we will have NVIDIA Reflex on boost. Now that we've covered all the basics of your training, it's time for the moment you've been waiting for! Alright, let's get into the mod, shall we? Visual mod number one that I'm going to be running is Ghost in the Shell 3.0 or Gits 3.0, specifically the Curia, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, but the Curia preset, which is just a personal favorite of mine as it does preserve a little bit of the natural tones that Cyberpunk comes with at base, but matures them a little bit. Now, of course, 
Again, that's just my personal preference. Feel free to choose a different preset if you do like the way that it looks. However, I can't, will say this much. If you go with a different preset, your game may look a little bit different in tone and color than what you're seeing right now on screen. As far as my other mod that I run, that is the infamous Nova LUT by the run and only Cyanide X, which I do run a few of their other mods such as Preem Water and Blur Be Gone. Now, Nova LUT is an absolutely amazing tone mapper, which really covers a lot of the bases that reshades do. However, it does it in just a native way so that you don't have to get the extra performance draw from reshade. Now, our third and final mod that we're going to be running is HD Rewind worked project which is amazing and does a great job at finding out those details within the various textures found around night city so things like graffiti uh things like the texture and asphalt all those small details that you may not notice until you look at them this improves them in such a major way now, as far as installation instructions go, I won't be covering them in this video because all of the mod authors have already done a great job of listing out exactly how to get these installed during your computer. So take time, follow the author's directions. Now, once you've gotten those three mods set up, your game should be looking pretty preem and we can go ahead and dig into one of the most important parts of this video, and that is the FPS numbers. Now, you can see on the top left side of the screen, thanks to Reva Tuner, we are pulling around an average of about those mid to high 80 fps numbers with ray tracing off and without using our dlss frame gen mod now if we toss our frame gen mod on you can see that we do almost immediately skyrocket all the way up to 130 plus fps which while on foot and moving around on foot in night city can look great there are some slight drawbacks to frame gen which is why i don't always run it see once you hop into a vehicle and start moving around at much higher speeds in Night City with frame gen on. Toward the bottom of your screen, you will notice a little bit of tearing or flickering, and I think this is mostly attributed to the 2060 really just capping out with its VRAM usage. Now, if you do have a 2060 Super pushing 8 gigabytes of VRAM, you may not notice this as much. Now, again, on foot, during combat situations, I never really noticed or had to deal with any of those frame tearings or flickers, and I never even even had like some of the input latency that some users were reporting so i would say as far as frame gen is concerned use it as a test to see how many fps you could grab if you don't have issues using it enjoy it if you do notice issues turn it off as it isn't hugely necessary now one thing i definitely think was worth noting in this video is performance in and around dogtown now, before Phantom Liberty even released, CDPR released a notice stating that our PCs were most likely not going to be fully prepared for what performance Dogtown was going to be asking for. With that being said, on an RTX 2060, I can average between mid 50s to just about 60, 61 FPS. However, this is one spot that I think frame gen really shines because you can really push this above that 60 FPS number and stay there while really not noticing too many graphical issues. Now I'll say this again, if you're watching this video and you're running something that is above a 2060, you have access to more than just six gigs of VRAM, then you probably won't notice as low of performance numbers as what I'm pulling here. But if you are on a 2060 or equivalent, don't be surprised if these are your performance numbers. Now, if you're back in Night City and still craving a little bit more graphical peel and you want to test this out with Reshade, I did run those numbers for you. And using the Ultimate Natural Graphics Reshade, I was able to pull off a similar 79 to 80 FPS with it on. And I don't think that's exactly bad. I mean, at the end of the day, we are testing this on an RTX 2060. It's the entry level RTX graphics card. So truly for it to be able to run this game at this high of frame rate utilizing three different graphics mods and a reshade on top i think those are pretty outstanding numbers now in the name of science and cyber psychosis i decided to run one last benchmark test before this video ends and that was to turn reshade off and turn rtx on just to try and see how far can we really push this 2060 so 
with reshade off rtx on we did manage to pull above 39 hovering right around the 40 ish fps range which again for an rtx 2060 is really not bad i mean three graphics mods plus reshade on this thing is really chugging along pretty solid and again obviously if you're running more beefier hardware you're definitely going to see some better numbers in this but for all of my equal to i would say mid-tier build pcs at this rate this is pretty much a proof of concept that you don't need an outstanding several thousand dollar computer to be able to make cyberpunk look good so if this video did help you out and anyways be sure to leave a like and make sure that after you've downloaded all of these mods to go for the nexus and be sure to endorse these creators as as much as i made this video it wouldn't have been possible without the hard work put in by all of the mod creators. And with that, I will catch y'all in the next video.